So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a new composition here and this can be whatever you like. I'm gonna make it roughly six seconds here in length and I've just set my resolution to 1080p. So the background I've, for that, I've just basically created a solid and nothing too fancy here, just sort of made it a dark sort of color, just something that we can kind of work with when we're creating these different effects. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with the line effect. And the way I created this was I just made sure I had nothing selected and then I just basically came up here, changed my stroke color to be whatever you like, and then made this about sort of 16 pixels, no fill, and then I just create basically a very sort of soft, curvy sort of line here. Maybe bring these back, nothing too fancy. And then what I'm gonna do with this is I wanna add just a few effects to this to make it sort of stand out. So the first thing I wanna add is I'm gonna add this, basically this glow effect. Now you can find this by searching for it up here and then just dragging it onto that layer. For this, what I'm gonna do is drag the glow threshold all the way down to zero. I'm gonna drag the radius right up. So if you want more or less of that, you can just sort of drag that up. And then the intensity, you can scale this up or down. Those are my settings if you wanna follow along with exactly. I've just left this as add, and then you can basically also change this to the A and B colors and make this say like a bright yellow. You can change these colors later, so it doesn't really matter, but you're just trying to match to the rough sort of color that you're working with. Now, what I did to sort of make this blend into the background is I wanted to sort of have like a mask that sat over the top. This tutorial was a student request from my ProMotion crew community. You can check out all the details for that as well as download the project files below. I've also added just a slight blur and all that does is just blur the edges of that line just to sort of help it blend a bit better. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a solid and these are gonna be called my mat. So I can basically use this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna search for the grid. So when I generate the grid, what I can actually do is these, these are the settings that I've made here. So what I've done is I basically just set this to be width and height and I dragged way up on here. So if you hold shift, you can actually drag right up on these up here and pass the 200 sort of limit. And what you're gonna do is if you scale these right down, you'll see what I've essentially done here. If I scale down on this border, I've got basically like this grid effect and I've just scaled way up. So I've made this width really wide and then I've scaled this right up so that you don't see essentially those, uh, the top and the bottom. Now, if I scale this right up, then we kind of end up with those lines. Now to off center this, what you can actually do is just move that up and you end up with these lines like that. And if I drag down on this, now we can start to see that I've got these sort of these blocks. Now these are the exact settings that I've used if you wanna follow along and I've made them black so they really stand out here. And then what I've also done is I've added just a basically like a Gaussian blur. So that just kind of gives them a blur effect. Now to actually animate these, I'm gonna come down to the anchor point here and I'm gonna create a keyframe here at the beginning and then go across and create one at the end. And with this first number, what you can actually do is just drag this across. Now that's moving quite fast, so I'm just gonna drag backwards on this just to sort of slow it down. And it's just a matter of trying to find the right sort of speed that you want. Again, you can always adjust this later, but that's basically the speed in which I want it to move. Now, if I go back to my line lay here, and if I just label that, just maybe lay line one, I'm gonna turn off that mat, and I'm gonna link this one here by toggling these modes and switches to that mat. So now we should be able to see you know, only the parts in between there. If you click this, you'll be able to basically reverse that. But now you've got a control where you can basically scale up. So if you want more blending or softer between those edges, you can also dial back on this if you want more gaps. So for instance, if I take this line and I basically flip it so it's inverted, then what I can do is if I hit T on my mat, I can basically 
drag down that opacity. So if I make this something like 96, you just get a very sort of a slight fade in there. Now at the moment, you should have these lines sort of moving across like that. Now we can customize this by taking that layer and then duplicating it, which is that line. So it's following the exact same thing. And we're gonna tune this line to basically be a bit brighter on those parts. So on this line two, what I'm gonna do is just delete the glow and I'm gonna come up here and basically make this a lot brighter into the color that I kind of want here. So I want it to be quite yellow. And then I'm also just going to basically scale up on this blurriness here and that's gonna create that really sort of soft edge look there. Another thing that I also did was I went up to the top here and I added just the grain. So you can add grain into your uh, thing and that basically will just help it give it a little bit of texture. You can see in here before and after. Those are the exact settings that I've used for mine and you can kind of see that in there. You might also want to go into the animation and just basically remove any animation so that it doesn't uh, basically animate that. Otherwise you can leave that on, it doesn't really matter. And there you go, we've kind of got that kind of where we want it. Now what you can also do is if you want to dial that back, you can also make this like a white, you can basically change the color on this. It doesn't really matter. Um, you've got control over whatever you want to do there. So that's basically how I created the little line effect. The other part of this was creating this hand. So you basically have like this hand, which you can see from the animation is sort of like closing. I would say from the original reference that I watched, this would actually be a 3D model that they've imported and then they can actually animate it. That's how you're going to get the best results. But I'll show you a quick way of the way that I did it to basically get around this to work with say a 2D image. So this is the image that I'm working with here or I sourced and this is basically just going to sort of, I'm just gonna drop this in here and I can just hit W on my keyboard to sort of rotate this around. So the first thing I wanna do with this is I basically just wanna add a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna add just the grain here and I'm gonna add a hue and saturation, drag down on that saturation and then I've also just added a little bit of curves here just to sort of soften that out. And that's all the settings that I've used there just to kind of get that sort of washed out sort of look. Then for this part, what I wanna do is really isolate just the parts in which I'm going to animate. So I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit more to kind of get it in the right position. And then what I'm gonna do is just with my pen tool, I'm just gonna come up here and just isolate these parts just here. Now don't have to worry about these parts down uh, underneath here or outside of this, because this is a PNG and it's got a transparent background. We're not going to see that. So I'm just going to isolate those little things there those fingers and then I can just come down here and just make this, give it a very slight sort of feather, maybe something like that, maybe scale down on that expansion, maybe to like negative one or something like that, just to sort of give it a bit of a softer look. You can refine that a bit more if you like. I'm also just gonna set that one to be none and then I'm gonna come up here and add another one for this part. Sort of cut this part off and then just sort of bring this up like that and then maybe give this also just a very slight feather something like that and also just add that part on there so with these what i can do is now that i've got that i'm just going to duplicate this and this one i'm going to drag underneath that line and these masks what i'm going to do is delete those because i don't need those and i'm just going to create a mask which sort of of isolates this part of the hand. So this will come into play a little bit later, but I'm just gonna turn that one off because that's gonna be the other side of the hand. And to animate this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to that top one again, and I'm gonna come up here to the puppet tool. And with my playhead here at the start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create basically like a point. You can turn off this Thing here because we don't necessarily need that and what you want to think about when creating points like this you really want to think about you know where you're kind of bending it so if you've got your thumb you're thinking about sort of bending it here you know it's going to bend here and then it's going to bend on those those parts of your finger so that's where you want to 
naturally create those points. Now this is automatically will animate once I move my playhead across and start to actually animate this. So if I bring these things across, these fingers like this, maybe something like that. You can kind of see it animating. You can kind of stretch it. You can kind of stretch the image to do what you want. The downside to using this method is that there are limitations to how far you can push it. To get the background to sort of sit back in, so to get this image here on the background, that's when we reactivate that layer underneath. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to animate this basically path a little bit as it's moving you know forward or backwards you might need to adjust this so what i like to do is come back here create a mass path go forward on my timeline and then maybe just adjust these so you can see we get that animation playing out there and it looks pretty realistic you might need to cover up a few things in here another option of doing this method and one that i explain a bit further in my animation pro course is actually going into uh, Photoshop and actually using the remove feature where you would digitally take out these fingers first and then you have a blank canvas underneath. So that would give you the most realistic results because then when you add these parts in over the top, you know that what's behind that is already filled in. Because if we remove the top part of the hand, these fingers are still underneath and they're not animated. So there are limitations to how far you can move that unless you go through that process. If you're new to After Effects and you want to learn about how to create animations like this in much more detail, understand techniques like I've just mentioned there, then you definitely want to check out my Animation Pro course. This is for people that are much more comfortable using After Effects and really want to understand how to create animations and design animations that really stand out. Design is a massive part of the animation process. If you don't have a good design element to start with, then you know you can animate something that doesn't look good and it's never going to look good. So you wanna really start with a good design and then build a, a, upon that. Now, so I cover a lot of these techniques and much, much more in my Animation Pro course. If you're new to After Effects and you've never used it before, then check out the Animation Master course. I'll have links to both of these down in the description below. The last part of this was creating these little coins that sort of animated or flipped around. This was really simple. All I did was I found this image here of these coins. You can just drag this straight into your timeline. I've already cut them out, so they're already like a PNG. I'm just gonna isolate one of them here. You can make them then 3D. And then if I hit Y on the keyboard, I can just reposition the anchor point. And then you can actually just kind of flip this around. So you've got basically like already an animated coin. Now what you can do is if you take those coins and I just added, say, a few basic effects to them. I just simply added a hue and saturation, and then I just added a bit of a curves to kind of give it that effect. You can drag it above or below that hand, so you can position it however you like. And then to animate it, all you do, all you do is you go down to the position properties, and you can just basically move them. You know, so I've got a slight bit of movement going from here to here. That's just the position properties. And the other side of it is the actual spinning. So if you go down to the Y rotation, this is what I'm using to basically make them spin. You can basically just option or alt click on your stopwatch. And then you can just type out time times I'm using 100 here. This is going to be the speed in which they rotate. You can also add a bit of motion blur on for that layer and then also just add it on for the composition. And this kind of gives you that finished effect. It's really simple, but looks really good. The last part of this was just to kind of create those little elements just to make this whole thing shine. And that was creating some text. So I just simply got my text tool here I type out my letters or whatever your text is going to be. And to that, all I did then was I just come over here 
And if yours is not there, then you can just basically come down to the effects and presets menu. And under here, there's a whole bunch of text animations in. With your playhead here at the start, you can literally just drag this onto those layers. So you can use the straight in by characters, or you could use the slow fade on, you could use the slide up by characters as well, and that's gonna do each individual letter. I just used those presets over here to create that effect. And then overall, what I did was I just created a new adjustment layer and to that adjustment layer, then I just add a little bit of grain and the grain is really just kind of makes it stand out. So you can dial this up or down that really kind of just gives it a lot of texture. And that's really what a lot of this is all about. It's just kind of creating that really nice sort of texture. So that's it for this tutorial. So it was straightforward and easy tutorial to follow along with. I'll have links to all of those things that I mentioned down in the description below. If you join the ProMotion Crew Gold membership, then you also get access to the bonus composition, which I've included as part of that download. You also get access to a ton of project files for After Effects for a lot of the tutorials that I've done on YouTube. And most of those also have bonus compositions that you can also get as part of those downloads. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up something that you can use in your own videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.